Cliffhangers can be the best or the worst thing about a film. They can leave us with mouths agape, thinking deeply about what we've just seen, or they can be maddeningly vague. A cheap cop-out that feels like a lazy writer deciding they don't want to give us the answers we so desperately crave. To an extent, even the most clever, entertaining use of cliffhangers can be infuriating, leaving us wanting to know more, even if we really recognise the genius of what we've just seen. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are the 10 most infuriating movie cliffhangers. Number 10. In Bruges. Starring the likes of Colin Farrell and Ralph Fiennes, In Bruges sees two hitmen, Ray and Ken, sent to the Belgian city of Bruges to await further instructions from their employer after a bungled assassination sees the accidental killing of a child. We've all been there! Their employer then tells Ken to kill Ray, but upon deciding against it, Big Boss Harry comes to the city to do the job for him. However, in the process of gunning down Ray, Harry blows the head off a dwarf actor disguised as a schoolboy, and thinking he's killed a child, Harry kills himself on principle, and Farrell's Ray is loaded into an ambulance while still conscious. And that's the end. We don't know if he made it, we don't know if he ever got the chance to apologise to that child's mother, we don't know if he ever got out of the utter shithole that is Bruges. Number 9. The Matrix Reloaded the final scene of Reloaded features Neo discovering that he has powers outside of the Matrix and that Agent Smith has managed to come aboard the ship via the body of one of Zion's resistance fighters, Bane. This is an interesting enough cliffhanger, but it's extremely annoying in retrospect because the sequel just didn't engage with the questions it raised in a satisfying way. Firstly, we never really find out why Neo has powers outside of the Matrix, and the Bane angle doesn't play out in particularly exciting fashion. It's hardly a major point of the film at all. Q mass groans at the to-be-continued message that popped up at the end of The Matrix Reloaded, and the damage to the franchise was massive and costly. And that's what you get. Number 8. X2 X-Men 2 ends with a fantastic climax as Dr. Jean Grey saves the other mutants by building a telekinetic wall to shield them against a torrent of water that she eventually unleashes upon herself, presumably dying as a result. However, what follows had just about every comic book nerd clapping their hands with glee. The final shot of the film floats over the Alkali Lake, and what can we make out? Why, the shape of the phoenix, which in comic book lore Jean Grey will turn into, flying away. And why did this make people so mad? Well, Brian Singer's hastily found replacement then completely screwed up X-Men The Last Stand, and precisely none of that promise was fulfilled. Jean Grey's potential as the Phoenix wasn't realised, and even casual comic book fans were left scratching their heads. Number 7. Super Mario Bros. Here's a cliffhanger that was infuriating at the time because of what it promised. The notoriously awful video game adaptation ends with King Cooper being defeated and the brothers heading home, only to have Princess Daisy come a-knocking. Looking dishevelled and rocking a gun, she asks for their help, suggesting that Super Mario Bros 2 was well on the way. Now, given how terrible the film was, it was the last thing anyone actually really wanted. Though the thought that it might make some money as one of the first video game adaptations was infuriating, as then we'd have a sequel pushed on us. Thankfully, the film tanked critically and commercially, so in the end, we were saved. Number 6. Cloverfield So at the end of found footage monster mash film Cloverfield, everything's totally buggered, and our two remaining camera wielders huddle under a bridge as bombs are dropped on New York City to finally take down the beast. Bleak, right? It gets bleaker. If you stay until the end of the credits, a crackling, garbled transmission can be heard, and reversing it reveals the haunting line, It's still alive. Oh, come on, wouldn't you want to know what happens next? I certainly do. Now, I know we sort of got a continuation via 10 Cloverfield Lane, but it kind of didn't have the same monster, and we don't know if it's set after the events of Cloverfield, blah, 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 blah. So my point still stands, I think. Number 5. Almost every horror film ever made. But he's not really dead, yells every horror film ever. Oh, for God's sake, groans the viewing audience. These sorts of cliffhangers are infuriating because they're so damned predictable and lazy. Pretty much every horror film, especially if it's a sequel, will pose some sort of tease like this in its final shot. The murderer will be killed, the good guy will get taken away in an ambulance, and then we cut back to the killer and they're gone. Or better yet, their eyes open, or they kill another person and disappear into the night. Ultimately, it's just a lot less exciting watching these films if the studio heads have already ruined the ending by letting us know that Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, or Jason Voorhees are going to be back for round 26. I suppose you could call it a shit predictable horror film ending for wankers. Hashtag shit predictable horror film ending for wankers. Again, that's a simple one. Number four, Old Boy. 
Old Boy is without question Chan Wook Park's masterpiece, a dark, gritty, gripping thriller that's difficult to look away from even as it broaches a difficult, brutal subject matter. The film revolves around a businessman who is imprisoned for 15 years before being released, at which point he begins seeking revenge. He ends up falling for a chef at a local restaurant, only to discover at the end of the film that she is, in fact, his daughter who was taken away from him once he was imprisoned. In Old Boy's final scene, he's hypnotized himself to forget that she was ever his daughter, and upon meeting up with her, gives her an embrace, and the camera closes in on his face, which changes from joy to anguish, leaving us unsure as to whether the hypnosis even worked. Though it's undeniably brilliant, it's also one of those crushingly inconclusive endings that just makes you want to know what the hell really happened. Number 3. 300 Here's one cliffhanger that's absolutely shameless and seemed to be so eagerly setting up a sequel, although it took an unbelievable seven years for one to come out. After the Battle of Thermopylae concludes at the end of the film, we see a rallying cry for the Battle of Plataea, which actually ended Persia's invasion of Greece in real life. The final shot of the film is the Spartans running towards the camera, prepped for battle. And it's the ultimate slap in the face for viewers. Get us excited about another battle, and then the film just ends. Zack Snyder could have really given us some extra bang for our buck here, but instead we're teased with awesome action beyond the bounds of the film that didn't even end up appearing in sequel form. For seven years. Seven goddamn years, and it wasn't even that good. Number two, 28 weeks later. Another film now that promises a follow-up in its cliffhanger, yet to date, just hasn't delivered upon it. Once the protagonists escaped the rage-infected invasion in the UK, they escaped to France, where we find out that things aren't a great deal better. The final shot is of a French accent asking for help through a helicopter radio as we see a group of rage-infected folk running through a train station out into the open, revealing the Eiffel Tower in the distance. This was obviously to set up 28 months later the finale in the trilogy that Danny Boyle still claims is going to happen, maybe, possibly, probably not though. However, given that it's been 10 years since it came out, I think it's safe to say the prospect of it actually getting made is rather unlikely, meaning this is nothing more than a frustrating tease. Number 1. Inception You can squint all you want, DiCaprio, it doesn't help this make any more f***ing sense. Here's a cliffhanger that got everyone talking. As Dom Cobb placed his totem on the table, people in the audience began to lean forward in anticipation, clearly realizing that something epic was about to happen. Would the totem continue to spin, suggesting that Cobb was still in the dream world, or would it fall over, letting us know that, indeed, he finally made it back to his kids? In a classic moment of flipping the bird at the audience, we never find out! The totem wavers as though it's about to fall, which some believe to be proof enough that he isn't dreaming, but we never see it fall. Nolan instead cuts to black and leaves us all left to ponder for eternity what happened. Now, it's of course important to remember that whether or not it fell over isn't really the point of the film. The point is that Dom didn't care anymore and just accepted the reality with which he was presented. Still, it's one of the most annoyingly fascinating mysteries in recent cinema history. And that's our list! Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.